the attempted coup, and that's precisely what it was, an attempt to seize political power outside of legal methods, that attempted coup failed. And tonight, we are going to talk about the Coloradans who opposed it, those who cheered it, and the ones who are right now trying to deceive you about what happened. The Democrats elected to Congress out of Colorado are moving to impeach President Trump if his cabinet won't remove him on their own. Marshall Zellinger spoke with the Coloradan who wants to run the hearing. I presided over the last impeachment. I would be happy to get another gavel and, and, and really do the job this time. Democratic Colorado Congresswoman Diana DeGette wants to impeach the president again, even though he's out of office on January 20th. Everybody says, well, it's only 13 days. But look what happened yesterday. He has the nuclear codes. He has a lot of damage he can do in 13 days. DeGette has co-sponsored a resolution with an article of impeachment, Incitement of Insurrection. It states the president willfully made statements that encouraged and foreseeably resulted in imminent lawless action at the Capitol. Violent, deadly, destructive, and seditious acts. We could have that hearing and we could impeach him over the weekend. Democratic Congressman Joe Neguse sits on the House Judiciary Committee committee, which would hold impeachment hearings. He tweeted, if the vice president and cabinet members are unwilling to use the 25th Amendment, then Congress must pursue impeachment. Democratic Congressman Jason Crow was an impeachment manager last time. He tweeted the president should be removed by the 25th Amendment or impeachment. Democratic Congressman Ed Perlmutter said the 25th Amendment is the only way to remove Trump from office immediately. He has not signed on to any impeachment effort. The 25th Amendment is completely appropriate or impeachment. Whatever we can do the fastest, that's what we should do to remove him. If there can be levity in an attempted coup, it's about how DeGette, who was trapped in the House gallery near Crow, was able to escape in heels. One of the, the things I've been doing during COVID is I've been um, exercising a lot. And I was never so glad of that as when I was running down those eight flights of stairs in my pumps and then through the, the tunnels of the Capitol, I thought, you know, that workout routine is really paying off. I asked the last time she felt unsafe at the Capitol, she told me 9-11. Once to get escape, she was taken to a secret room with hundreds of other House members. And if the insurrection wasn't enough, she now may have a COVID concern. A Kansas congressman announced yesterday that he tested positive for COVID. She's not quite sure if he was among the hundreds that were in the room with her. She's going to monitor herself for, for COVID symptoms now. On top of everything else. So you had the perspectives of the Democrats in our congressional delegation. All three Republicans in Colorado's congressional delegation stoked the election rigging fantasies that helped to animate that mob yesterday. Congressman Ken Buck and Doug Lamborn and Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. They were pretty quiet today. I asked for interviews with all of them. Boebert and Lamborn's people didn't respond at all, and Buck's people were busy with other media, apparently, and we've seen some social media from him and yesterday where he is saying, you know, distancing himself from what happened yesterday, but as we talked about yesterday, he was supportive of overturning the results in this Texas lawsuit, but now saying, this is not what I was saying, and I know there's been other members of Congress who backed away late last night from of overturning or objecting to the Electoral College results that were saying, I don't want any part of this now, but they still have a track record before that. Marshall, thank you.